pop off folders and hello hello everyone so today we will start developing into the tpt tool so this is a testing tool which is used for you know, lots of for platform supported testing and one such successive example will be trying to take here uh, which is a uh, matlab and simulink so uh, before before we jump into the actual topic so let's know something about tpt tpt is called as a time partition testing tool and uh, this is mostly for testing any automotive products and it's a very well known tool in the automotive domain and uh, a uh, lot of uh, you know organization loves the support and the options provided by the tpt itself uh, there are few tools in the market uh, but the tpt stands out out of all those which we have uh, so tpt basically uh, built on java and uh, python so it's not uh, python uh, technically it's called jitam so <coughs> so before we start into this stuff uh, you should have the tpt installed and uh, you know you have an option for uh, getting an evaluation license you can go to the dpt website which is by the pike tech software engineering so uh, you have to provide your details and you will get your evaluation license uh, so what is uh, so you know uh, unique things about uh, dpt is uh, it's very useful for useful tool for testing uh, with respect to signals so when you have data you know with respect to time and you want to test with respect to time so this is the tool which you are looking for so when you open tpt this is how you get uh, this is the screen which you are looking at this will be your home page and so by default you know uh, you can create a new uh, project or you can open an existing project which is the usual step so in our case we'll start creating a new one and once i created a new one on the left side we got some uh, network of folders and some test cases and on the right side we have some you know, folders here so we'll come into the stuffs later on um, so we have description and test, de test case details in the bottom and so on the top you have a couple of options here uh, so we edit view so you can adjust all the kinds of settings you want execution options tools there are a lot of options which we will go step by step uh, so entire dpt course will be covered in our current uh, curriculum so we'll start with the basics of understanding how the dpt structure works so basically in the file section as we have seen we can create a new project or if we have any uh, options of creating uh, you know, a known template so have step where you have to click on so you have a lot of uh, recently opened files um, from history saves a so, uh, lot of stuffs in the edit section we have something for search and autocomplete test case definition so we'll come to those in the view you have a couple of windows which are hidden which you are not able to see in the main window here so those can be seen here and perspective so let's say you have by mistake only altered the default views and you want to retrieve it so click on view manage perspective and click on default to get your default view back so you have declaration editor you have type editor you have unit editor we come to those execution yeah, we will configure that in some time options so this is the first step where you have to check uh, when you get your dpt installed for the first time so basically it has some default options like theme preferred file format uh, you know, <coughs> which you want to share and save and recently opened files how many you have to store a uh, lot of things like that workbench so this is a hotkey which we will be regularly using it's a control and space so we will come to that in some time access slides step lists plugins variables as a lot of these things so i have support for these many 
set of you know compilers installed on my PC. Uh, so, but today we will be looking mainly into MATLAB. So, we will be working with the MATLAB and Simlink point of view. So, MATLAB I will be checking. So, uh, there is an active installation 2019B and yeah, it says everything is working fine. It is able to detect it. Uh, there are a lot of other minute options, but most of the things will work with the default options itself. So, that's with the options we have something about the tools where you know we have INCA support can configuration can affect configuration auto tester and you have an option to generate test cases uh, we will also cover this in one of our classes and these are the future releases kind of a beta version so if you want to try it out you can enable this and you can start using it we have an option to import, manage, and export requirements as well as the test case details. So we will cover this. It has a support for IBM ALM. So if you have IBM ALM installed, so you can also import and export stuff from that. And this is our regular uh, you know, help section where you find all the uh, you know, necessary information for TPT to be handled. Now let's get started. So for a TPT to work, first thing it has to know uh, what you are trying to test. So we have to configure TPT. Uh, first thing will be your platform. So which platform are you targeting for? So I'll just click on the platform configuration, which is a plug symbol, or you can also go to execution and click on platform configuration. We also have a shortcut, Control F10. If you do that get a platform configuration window uh, by default it will be empty when you are using a new project so you have to add a platform so by default uh, my APT supports this many number of platforms so I can run uh, test cases on an Arduino uh, as get autosar cc plus plus can I can I so forth and so forth so as I said so today MATLAB and Simulink our main perspective but uh, to give a uh, idea about uh, the writing of test cases or anything uh, the writing of the test cases are similar for any of this platform uh, maybe a minute options might change but majorly the structure remains the same how you define the test cases will remain the same so I'll just add this so now a platform is added I can also expand this to look into the detail section but this is the summary section on the top so by selecting this platform name completely so this will be new uh, so first thing I have to select is which version of MATLAB uh, your model has so I'll select 9.9 .9, which is uh, 20, uh, 2019b and it is asking where is your model located so as you know MATLAB and Symbolink uh, is stored in a format SLX so I'll try to browse it Subsystem. So it is asking which subsystem are you targeting for. So I'll just click on this browse button. So since the MATLAB is not yet open, so my TPT will try to open it. So my Simulink and uh, MATLAB has a target link installed over it. So this uh, confirms my target link is installed and you can also see my TPT environment is now connected to MATLAB so my TPT can you know, send data as well as receive data from MATLAB all of a sudden there is a window opened here right I will do this again so since my model is already open so this is showing it so it is asking which subsystem you are targeting let's see the model so this is my model and this is the main subsystem which I want to test so this is TL underscore main subsystem so I will select this subsystem which I want to test so let's say you want to test something inside it let's say you want to test only the indi indicator function you can also do that we will come to that in the later point but since uh, in the beginning we will do the whole, uh, subsystem workout now interfacing so 
MATLAB uh, TPT should know what are the signals available in your subsystem. So you can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 inputs and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 outputs. So once we click on import, this will go for compilation, I guess. Yeah. And once the compilation is successful, uh, let me show in the model. But yeah, you uh, can see all the inputs and outputs came into the import interface window. Uh, let me sort it out. You can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inputs, and there are twelve outputs. But what we meant here was dual inputs and seven outputs so what tpt is trying to do is tpt is saying from its point of perspective that whatever the outputs in the model you have those will act as an inputs to the tpt because that's how it reads and whatever the outputs from the tpt will go as an input to the model so that's why the in and out are interchanged in a you know, regular uh, perspective so by default you know the action is ignored so that means even though if you click ok uh, nothing will be important so make sure you click on default all or you have any specific agenda to test a particular signal or particular subsystem then you have to customize any options sure you can just click on an add or rename or ignore once you click on default all so it says add it okay now this has an enough information to you know generate a test frame a test frame is required so let's say you have a matlab simulink and you want to test something so obviously you need a test frame for that so without the test frame you can't uh, send an input or read an output or you can't judge uh, you know whether the output you are getting to the model is uh, correct or not so for that to happen we have to generate a test frame so before this we have an option for task move coverage measurement during test execution so let's not enable it now we'll come back to it later we'll click on generate test frame it says existing tpt interface data found in matlab workspace should the existing model to be replaced so i'll say yes so it might take a minute but you can see our test frame is automatically built so this is a test frame and the TPT automatically connects your uh, system under test to its own automatically generated test frames. Yeah. Uh, we have to import the step size. So the my model step size is 10 milliseconds. So that's what it is imported already. If it is something else, it's a thousand milliseconds and I want to import it again automatically to correct it. correct but it will just show you you have to correct it so with this we have uh, enough settings to start off with execution um, so fusion dll generation i will not go deeper now uh, we have something for dashboard we will come to that point in the later days then we have for test case generation using task move same thing we'll come back later so apart from this there are some basic settings which every tester should follow first thing is matlab uh, settings <coughs> the startup directory so usually whenever matlab starts it starts in a different path you know so like uh, matlab default directory so you have to specifically ask tpt to work whatever you have uh, you know the files which has to be sh saved should be in this location so make sure you put this in startup directory something for original model uh, we have something called as initialization file we'll come to that point once we do some parameterization but uh, we have some parameter handling both interfaces so most of the time these uh, you know, the default settings will do the job same thing the other things so you have any initialization at the time of model loading so you can it here or you can include a script as well directly 
and at the time of uh, not test case execution we wanted to do some uh, scripting activity you can include it here and for any code coverage activity you can enable it here and select the respective or you can add custom script for that finalize script when so this will be like after your test case is executed uh, you want any script to be uh, run so you can add it here environment variables so these are some global variables which you can declare and you can use it across uh, other options we have ATPT executable nothing else so let's save this TPT as well the same place as where my model is yeah okay so now my platform is configured so there is no issue with the platform uh, let's let's come towards the TPT so TPT on the left side so let's focus on the left side for next uh, two classes we will not speak anything about uh, the access left or the details so uh, let me close it So let's worry about this section. So we have something called the states and then we have something called the test cases. So maybe I'll delete everything. This looks more easy. Let's keep everything empty so that uh, we have an understanding for starting from scratch. So, writing test cases, how easy it is or how easy to manipulate a test case, you'll be able to see now. Uh, so, there are multiple ways of writing a test case. So, for that, to add a test case, first of all, you have to right click on this test case folder and you have an option for adding a test case uh, in a time partition method and adding a test case in step list method. So, using a step list method is a pretty straightforward way and it's the easiest way as well so I'll just create a step list method test case yeah so automatically named and automatically it got an ID okay so we have a status as well for that but it's fine so that's how we create a test case let's come to the middle section now we have a lot of options yeah don't have to worry uh, let's let's uh, just focus on one such uh, point where you know, it doesn't require much of a hassle so I have something called as an indicator status okay so this signal is enough to handle uh, two outputs left indicator and right indicator so my indicator status zero means off one means left side on Two means right side on, three means left temporary on, so it will be spiked for three times, and four means right side temporary on, spiked for three times. So that's the functionality of this one. Yeah, so it's a simple functionality, it's in your uh, regular car where you do a left and right indicator, and you know, uh, same functionality is implemented in the MATLAB. So we will write the test case only for the indicator now. So maybe I'll add it as a group. Okay. So how did I add a group? So just have to right click and we have something called as add group. So maybe I'll add a folder for that. I'll say this is about indicator and I'll move this test case inside this just drag and drop. Yeah. So now I'll say indicator one test case. I'll click on the add step. So not worried about any other thing I'll just start with a simple channel so most of the time the channel will be able to do your 90-95% of your job only when you have you know, something very specific like you, know, you want the signal to be ramped up slowly increase then you can use ramp or if you have want to plot your data using some Excel or you know, manually add it so uh, embedded signal is option for it or you have some data which is in a mat file or an excel or a cpv file csv file uh, you can use this or you can also use a table option where you give the options uh, with respect to time 
uh, one column and values in another column so we will come to that but to start off channel is sufficient for almost 90 percent of the use cases so there are two sets of options which are highlighted in green color and it says you know assignment operations happening here and there is something called as an always yeah so and there is something called a documentation uh, we are only thinking about uh, indicator strings so let's add that sequence how do you add it there are multiple ways you can just type it yeah so whenever you type there is always a mistake so that's when in the options when I have shown you uh, something about hand hotkey uh, where did it go here this is for auto completion help so control and space so let's uh, control and then space so you will have all your inputs here okay you can see the marking here so let's say channel c where the black arrow, arrow mark is on the right side top so that means it is an input so you can find indicator status here once it is assigned you have to provide a value of this so let's let's give as one nothing okay so one is enough immediately when you give a valid value here you will be able to see the plot in the bottom section and this plot is valid till 60 seconds where is this 60 coming from so for that you have to go to your platform configuration window again click on that you have something called as timeout so whatever you mention here that will be your execution time um, maybe this will take immediate effect yeah so now we have 30 minutes it will take immediate minutes to complete so now we have indicator status 1 ready uh, we will give it a run so how do you run this so you have a platform configuration earlier next to platform configuration you have a run button this is called as an execution configuration you can just click on this run button or play button so by default you will have a default configuration so more or less this will work but if you have uh, any more speculations you can add it here how many configurations you want yeah so most of the time one will be more than enough so in this section you have something called as a directory storage option you have a report storage option and then you have something called as execution mode normal uh, we have something called as advanced when you switch on you know, it will be advanced then we have something called as a platform so in the platform whatever the platform configuration you have mentioned so that will be coming up let's say you have added more than three platforms so you are planning to execute the same test cases in KNOE ASCAT as well as in MATLAB so you can create multiple configurations and you can assign each and every platform uh, one configuration or the same default configuration you just have to change the platform and you can do it and then we have something called as test set so we will come to this in the later point uh, you have something called parameter set so this is also coming in the later point and we have something called back to back and variables so let's not go deeper into it uh, so the second type is about attributes so you can add a number of attributes which will be shown in the report only you have storage so where you want to store the uh, you know, temporary file or the report of directory layouts and then you have something for uh, report settings so you want to customize any report options so this will be one observation on report you can also add a custom script this will be start script before your test case starts this is the place where your python script starts to work end script once your test case execution completes this is where it should so, uh, execute your script we have everything ready so 
do not forget to select execute do not forget to select assess do not forget to select report so these are not mandatory though but i'll come to the you know, the left uh, options so some lots of class we will see how these options will take the effect once i click run this will start sending the data to my matlab and my matlab executes and we have completed the execution hello so when it shows hello that means the test case is neither passed nor failed that means we haven't provided any criteria for passing or failing but how do we see what is happening inside so just you have to select the test case click on the signals now on the left you will have lot of options so i'll close this you know, empty block i just want to be clear here uh, you have to understand so lot of testers have an issue you know uh, analyzing the signal itself so first thing is you should make your signal viewer as much comfortable as possible so if i were you i will just disable everything in the first hand okay uh, so from the c to the c i have disabled everything and i will just click on c here okay so now only the channels from my matlab will come okay don't get confused with the name channel here but uh, the same uh, denoted uh, denotion is being used for the signals in the matlab as well so we come back here you can see uh, there are all the signals so there are inputs as well as an outputs so whichever has an black arrow mark on the right side top corner those are the inputs and on the left side top corner whichever you have a black arrow mark those are the outputs so how do i know uh what are the outputs for this one so basically there are two two methods so first thing is you should uh your requirement should say what are the signals will be impacted but in normal case i already know the requirements so we have left indicator and right indicator right means so i'll just plot it now we have uh right in we don't have the exact signal names there is a reason why Of the high beam brightness, uh, yeah, left indicator brightness and the right indicator brightness. So I'm not getting the same exact name for some reason. But let's not worry. So let me first plot the input signal. So this is my input signal indicator status. So I got one always for thousand eight hundred seconds. Why thousand eight hundred? Because we have given the black one configuration a timeout of thirty minutes. Let's see how the indicator status came up. Right and left. So I assume this is the signal for the right indicator. So uh, we know the requirement. So what does the activation condition says? When it is one, your left should be on. So not the right one. Right. So the right indicator should obviously be zero. I'll click here and I'll say add view below or above. It's up to your convenience how you want to add. And I will just drag and drop the left indicator signal. Hmm. Little peculiar to observe, and it's completely uh, dark. All right, so let me zoom in a little bit, uh, and maybe you see there are some spikes. Okay, let's let's fine tune this. Uh, I don't want my test case to run for 30 minutes. I'll just say. Run for 30 seconds, and I will run the test case again. So <clears throat> you don't want to open the signals again. You just you have to, you know, keep your older data, uh, sorry, the uh, test data window open. And when you reopen that, it will ask, okay, something is changed. You want to reload that? Yes. now it makes much sense but let's fit the screen so in the bot in the top you have something called as zoom to fit all uh, square box four arrow marks you know that <coughs> now you'll be able to see 
So, how our indicator works? This is an exact replica in a daily use case. So, when you give an indicator status as one, so immediately your brightness of your light goes to 100 and slowly comes to 0, 100, 0, goes on till it becomes 0. Yeah. Let's switch it off. Maybe I'll keep it to 0. I'll rerun the tests. <coughs> now. Neither my right indicator nor my left indicator is on because I kept to zero. Now, that doesn't make sense. I want to see when it is off, how it behaves, as well as when it is on, how it behaves. So for that to happen, in the step list method, this is how we follow. Uh, in the add button, we have something called as wait. Just wait. Not wait for value, not wait with xw. Just wait. And you have to say, for how many seconds you want your indicator status to be the value zero? I'll say five seconds. Okay, so you can also mention five s as five seconds. So like accept both. Okay, and again I'll add another channel and I'll say indicator status. So I did a control space. So remember this option whenever you suddenly pops up a uh, dialog like this that means I have popped up a control space option so I'll say after five seconds I'll make it into one okay and then again I'll add a wait let the indicator be on for 10 seconds okay and then I want to switch off my indicator status so I'll make it zero This is more of a test case. Now you can see a kind of a signal is built here. When you select an indicator status, see uh, sometimes people will select a weight and they will say, okay, what is happening? Uh, you don't see here. So, but uh, when you select weight uh, and you have given 10 seconds here, so that means uh, the green highlighted. Right. So this area is between 5 to 15 seconds. So this is the wait duration. So whatever the wait you are trying to speak here, so this is the wait duration. So, but technically the wait happens in a different terminology here. That means this indicator status is set to 1. And this 1 will be held for 10 seconds. That's what this uh, wait does. Okay. When you don't give wait, you remember the previous test case, right? So where I gave 0 and always it will be 0 or I gave 1 and always it will be 1. Now this is more like a step saver and it's much more easy to see and confirm immediately what's my input is. Right? So let's run this test case again. So I'll open this window. So it says reload. Yeah. Now we should be able to you know, make more sense out of it. So when it is off, when it is zero, my right and left indicator both are zero. Right. But when it is one, left indicator starts to blink. Right? But whereas my right indicator stays in zero because I haven't given the respective value to switch on the right indicator. Let's do that as well. Um, so now I don't want to go to a plus and do that. So I can also copy this wait command here and I'll just paste by selecting this indicator, the last signal. If I paste it, this will come right next to that. Now, same thing, I don't want to add. I just have to copy this where I just I have to change the value. So now we will focus on value 2 where it says I'm right indicator. Say I want to make it wait for five seconds. Yeah, I don't want to keep it for a longer duration. And I, in the last, I want to make it off for sure. So I copied and pasted the zero status and the wait status. 
so it is not mandatory in the last step but uh, it is required we will see in the future why it is required on a top level so try to understand what the signal is trying to do so 0 to 5 my indicator is off 5 to 15 my indicator is 1 my left side is on and then 15 to 20 it is off again 20 to 25 my right indicator is on let's run this I click on test data yes you are able to see how it is why what is it so uh, you know, how can i say uh, you want to analyze it more or you want like to see what is happening a little bit closer you can always zoom in it's a simple scroll option and you can always zoom in or you have this uh, entire line where you can easily come back by just clicking on the right arrow mark in your keyboard you can start moving your cursor on a time basis and you can simply see what happens exactly when it becomes one. Yeah. So it will be very easy for understanding as well as for analyzation. This is how we write a basic test case. Yeah. Now, what does this always do? This always will be like okay let's say you have given a value 0 and this value 0 will be sent to your MATLAB every sample that's what always will do okay let's say you want to optimize a little bit of your execution time okay so you don't want to put a lot of stress in writing so much of data from the DPT or MATLAB it doesn't make much of a difference but uh, you want to change it to once okay you will not find any difference yeah so it's always on once it's almost the same but when does it matter i'll show in another example in the future but yeah. so here even if you do once this will be sufficient or if you do it always no harm done you can always add some documentation say okay of status okay. F indicator on data off turn on the last step will be your indicator off yeah. so we have analyzed test case and then we'll come back to this build progress window this is where you can see the test cases so let's say you have perfectly closed that uh, no worries you just have to rerun it so build progress window is kind of sensitive uh, before you close it to make sure you generate the overview report that's a good practice if you forget to generate sometimes automatically the report generates but uh, it's always a good practice before you close this generate a report so how do we generate a report so there is an option here just click on that and ask control yeah and this is the report so we have to say what is the file name of the dpt what is the version of the dpt and how many test cases are in total and how many are in the result so past zero failed zero inconclusive so that's why we are getting an error status shows clearly when this assessment is executed and what is the duration how much time it has taken for this test piece to be executed it has taken approximately 1.5 seconds yeah. there are some hyperlinks here if you click on that it will go a little bit deeper and this will give a gist on what are the signals involved or what are the signals by default is given to the values and what are the outputs we have yeah. Uh, so for uh, uh, this is how uh, people get confused. So again, the inputs are meant to be output. So that's why you are seeing your uh, left indicator and the right indicator. Uh, the signal. Uh, so how can I say? The output.
notes are kind of interchange so this is a regular thing in tpt but uh, you are having an option to customize that so we will come to that in the later days again so but by default these are the options which are doing and the last section clearly explains what your test case is doing completely including our documentation yeah so if you remember the channel we have given zero then one then zero then two then zero and with all the right duration for all the required information using this page yeah so the variable summary we are not using any variables as of now so nothing here so this is how we execute and write a test case step by step yeah now we will write the same test case in uh, another method which is known that is called as time partition method so your time partition method has a kind of a flow chart behavior i can say and it's a kind of a states to state transition way of communication so in the step list you will have this plus button and where you add the channels directly but the time partition method that's not the case so first thing is you have to uh, think and uh, understand how many uh, states are required. So, what is a state here? Every operation or every group of uh, operations you want to club and execute it uh, in a single step. So, that you will be adding in a state. So, for that, so you have to click on this option or you can also do a shortcut F2. So, I click here and I'll just click some states. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 uh, states are happening. And whenever I click here, so you are able to see on the left side there are some testlets created in parallel. So I will come to that point. But as of now, uh, we have to finish this structure. We have to complete a flow here. So uh, a flow always starts with a junction. So make sure create a junction in the first so the black dot or you can use a uh, shortcut f5 so this is where it starts and the operation will complete or your test case execution will complete when you reach to your final state so the final state is next to your state box so this is a hello round box and this is called as a final the shortcut is f3 so we should have a junction we should have you know so many a number of states it's not fixed so here i have taken uh, six but uh, let me delete three i'll just keep four for time to make it very simple now we have to connect the flow so for that we have an arrow mark here I'll just click that just you have to clip on connecting the dots yeah so with this we have completed our entire network but still my error exists it says uh, there is no active region selected yeah so you're able to see like entire thing are completely disabled so to enable the flow yeah so we have we have created a test case right so this test case should know how it has to go to the final so you just have to use a shift and you have to give a left click on any one of the transition lines so immediately the transitions will be active now the error has gone away yeah now it has some state testlet 2 testlet 3 testlet 4 testlet 5 yeah so if you want to rename it yeah, so testlet 2 belongs to here that's why it is highlighted testlet 3 is here so if you want to rename it you can rename it saying you know, any name you want and immediately it will take effect same with the other things so with this all four states are connected 
Yeah. Why are we making it so complicated than this one? So you, you might feel this is the easiest method you have and it's easy to build. But let's assume you have n number of signals, let's say 30, 40, 50 signals you have to do to complete one the single test case. You have to split it into groups and you have to call it on separate basis. So that's where this method comes in very handy. So not only for that, there are a lot of advantages. Uh, the test case is easy to manipulate and uh, well, let's say in future you have to do some changes and it can take immediate effect. Yeah. But don't worry, we whenever I create a test case, I create in both the methods, then you will come to know the advantages and disadvantages as we go on. Yeah. So now we have state one. So in the state one, on the left side, you are able to see there is something called states again inside, and then you have something called as variants and inside you have something called as default. So this default is nothing but a variant. We call this as a variant, and this is a V symbol here. Okay. This variant is similar to our step list test case method. Yeah. So just like how we do here, we do the same inside a variant. Now you are able to see the plus option same channel option here we do the same yeah so indicator status zero yeah and uh, I'll just say the naming convention will also match what I am trying to do here so that you know by looking at the flow itself you'll come to know what is happening here when you give a default name, you will not see the text here. But when you rename it to something else, you will immediately see the text. Okay, so you can always keep that as handy. Now we have this indicator status zero. Yeah. And we have indicator status one. off again and then I'll make it the right indicator as on which is two yeah so now it will take it will make more sense now so let's just try this. I'll give an execute and we'll run this test case. Yeah. So how does it know which test case we are running? So whichever test case you are planning to run, click on the test case. Click on this execution configuration. Here you make sure you select selected test case. Or you wanted to run everything, you can select this default test set, which is two. Two means there are two test cases. So, but now let's focus on this current one got something and let's plot it huh. so earlier we had this view right so we had this view I wanted the same view to be applicable for any other test case so this is for test case number 001 uh, which is this one right and the one which we earlier were using was indicator 001 so I want the same signals to be plotted again and again whenever you open to a new test case. So I have to save this as a preference. How do we do that? Click on File, click on Save Preference 1. Yeah. So immediately you go to your the new uh, test case data and you just no, it's not taking effect. Just close it and you will open the page progress window again. Click on the signals again. Now you'll be able to see has been taken okay now I'm able to see my indicator status signal is always zero something is wrong or something I have missed so I said indicator zero then indicator one indicator off indicator two which is same as my the previous test case what is actually missing is the wait duration how do we give this wait duration this is simple in this method 
just you have to uh, maybe double click on this transition so you have something that is default uh, it's a good practice to not to touch default you just delete it and save you know wait for five seconds give a name for that and you have to provide the condition format so this name is just for our purpose okay this doesn't mean you have given a condition or anything like that so inside whatever the condition you have given that's what you put here so yeah, let's say if time is greater than five seconds so that's the condition we have to give for wait for five seconds yeah so now when i right click on this you will get the text yeah same thing we'll do it here so by default there is a default option but this default we are not supposed to use why because the text is important you should always have the catch what is happening in the background as well five seconds maybe five seconds yeah. so now this one's here same thing as the here we do default and wait five seconds five seconds now this is taking a lot of time if i have a lot of state how do i do this so let's say you have created a, uh, i'll create a new transition i'll say wait for 10 seconds i think it's going to be 10 seconds i want this to be taken into effect for rest of the things okay so we have this option called a synchronized state click on this select the transitions which you want to apply okay select overwrite automatically and delete automatically click ok now what happens immediately your wait time seconds will be visible automatically in other transitions as well you just you have to select it yeah and remember from the first junction to your first state there should not be any condition given and it is disabled here as well let's say you have forgotten and you have synchronized so you might have remembered when i'm synchronizing i have selected only from three to five i haven't selected one so if i selected one what might have happened is that would have written deleted my default and it would have replaced the wait five seconds and wait 10 seconds and there is a formal condition but the formal condition here is disabled so even though you synchronize it it doesn't take into effect and it should uh, show an error so obviously you have to maintain a default in your first transition yeah now let's replay or rerun this now this is a second method of rerunning this test case till now we were selected the test case we got to the execution completion we ran it but you can also run it from the build progress window just by selecting the start selected option Uh, okay, the signals and if you are able to see immediately my preferences are being loaded on top right because when I have saved it as preference 1 this is my default preference whenever you click on that uh, signals viewer option the first preference will be loaded and here you are able to see clearly you know, a complete activation of left indicator between 5 to 10 and from 15 to 20 to a right indicator yep so that's how you write a test case in ppt uh, we'll go deeper in further classes i will also show the methods of reducing the states and whenever we create a test case in this method also as well as in this method so slowly you will start to see the differences and based on the use case so if you have a very simple test case you can use this method if you have a little bit complicated but in future you have a lot of tampering you have to do then you can choose this method but it's entirely up to your level of creativity your level of thinking it always works out so thank you again we'll meet in our next class